video on how the uh, elevator components go together, what those components are and how they assemble. Uh, basically, we've got the elevator skin. This happens uh, to be the right elevator skin. Uh, it should come out of your kit just like this, pre-bent, pre pre-drilled, uh, ready to assemble. Uh, the end ribs, the outboard rib, inboard rib, center line for the rivet line on each of the ribs. Uh, hinge material on the H5, it's a continuous hinge all the way across the, the top of the elevator to the horizontal. And then the horizontal, or the elevator connect, which is a two-piece, well, this one happens to be powder coated already. Yours will be just steel, and unless we start powder coating all their steel parts, which we're considering doing. Uh, but that's the elevator connect. Uh, we'll show how that goes on a little later, but uh, those are the components. Um, your hinge material will not have, at this point, does not have the pre-drilled holes in it. What we've done is, uh, well, for demonstration, I'll just flip it over. Uh, the, hinge, the hinge slides in the top. Basically how this goes together, people are always asking how the hinge lines up on the... It goes down from the top, and I've got the offset part on the inside. That'll set on top of the skin, as you can see. Uh, the, the uh, hinge sets on the top. Get it positioned end to end. It's kind of cumbersome here. It's easier if it's laying in your lap. Uh, get it positioned end to end, and then get one hole drilled in there to click it. Don't worry about this back skin yet. All you're trying to do is get the holes in the, in the hinge. And I'll show you here, we've already done that on this other side. So we've, we've had this hinge installed, or clicked in place. I'll put it back, put a couple of clicks in it so you can see how it's going to go together. And basically, once you get one hole, and of course, these are all one inch, one inch spacing on the, uh, on these holes. So, I mean, theoretically, you can, you can uh, use a drill guide. If you, if you have a drill guide, if you don't have one, call Hummel Aviation and we'll find you one. Uh, it's basically just a piece of flat steel. Uh, Dan, could you hand me the drill guide there? Uh, we've talked about this before. I, maybe you're skipping around in the video, but this is, this is just a drill guide. A uh, piece of green tape tells me that it's a 3 seconds drill guide. Just a piece of uh, tool steel with uh, 3 seconds holes drilled on one inch space. And what that does for you, is once you get two holes any place along in here, you can clip this drill guide to whatever you're doing. It could be on skins, it could be on, on any hardware, any, any, of the, any of the parts that you need one inch spacing on. Or if you need two inch, you just skip every other hole and so on. Uh, so that drill guide is a pretty useful tool. Um, so basically we can get this Clico together. We can actually put it right into the skin at this point. show you on this end is that this hinge is flush with the top of here. The skins are bent with a little bit about an eighth inch, maybe three sixteenths offset to allow for this, for the uh, rolled part of the hinge. Uh, when it's all together, this will be nice and flat across the top. Uh, the, uh, of course, the ribs are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, again, they got the, got the edge, uh, edge distance marked with the red line. Just push that into the into the elevator, line it up, see your red mark, get a nice flush edge along here, and then just start drilling and click going. Uh, One thing I want to show you is important on, on, on assembling the elevators. Uh, I'm going to have to take a few clicks out of here, but because the the surface is tapered, as you can imagine, the you can't build this flat on a table. Uh, it'll make sense to you when you think about it a minute. But let me take the clicos out of the bottom of this so we can lay it flat on the table. Uh, because it's tapered, you have to have an offset in the outer panel. Offset meaning the corner has to be shimmed up to be straight. Not to be flat, but to be straight. So 
I've had guys call me and say my, my, ele my elevators went together and they're twisted. Well, think about it a minute. This is a, if, these, if these two are parallel, if you move this straight in, this point here is going to be off the table down here. And as we show on the plans, it's about 3 eighths of an inch. So when this cleat goes together, this is exactly how it should be. It should have a, a, little, bit of a little bit of a twist. But this one's all cleat go together. We've got everything drilled out to, to the eighth inch holes. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll rivet this up. We'll pre-assemble the other one, get it riveted together, and then the next step will be installing it onto the, onto the okay, hole. Okay, we've got the elevators uh, riveted together with the uh, hinge in place. Uh, what, just as far as the installation goes, one thing you really want to watch out for or be careful of is we prefer that you slide the, the hinge underneath this, this corner gusset. Um, I know it's only 25 thousandths, but if you, if you get it on top, it does, it, it does put an offset, if you will, in the hinge, which could cause it to bind a little bit. Uh, what we do is we just position this in place. You just push it right up against the trailing edge. Uh, we've got it slid under the skin. What I like to do is just mark a hole on each end, basically. That'll get you uh, a place to Clico, Clico this in place, and then you can go along and, and uh, back drill or drill the rest of the holes. So we've got the, I marked everything. We've got a, a hole in each end that will Clico in place. We'll go ahead and rivet this on. We'll do both elevators, and then we'll come back and show the elevator connect in the next one. Okay, we left off. We're going to hinge the, or rivet the hinge in for the elevators. We've got that done. Everything's riveted in place. Uh, when you, when it, we didn't talk about the hinge pin before. We cut the hinge pin about a half inch short of the overall hinge, and then with the end a quarter of an inch on each end, we put a sixteenth inch. Uh, cotter pin through the end. Uh, obviously you want to kind of angle it maybe at 45 degrees off of this surface so that when it moves the head of the cotter pin or the tail of the cotter pin doesn't hit anything. Uh, so that's just kept. It's not likely that the hinge pin would get out anyway with the, the it's not important to hit on each end but just good practice. So those are in place. It's all hinged. Next thing you want to look for is uh, check your Check your alignment. These are just sitting on the spar. The elevator connect isn't installed yet. Obviously, that's what we're going to do next. But we've got these sitting on the on the spar, and we had the we had the sander file a little bit off the bottom edge over here to get these setting both at let's call it zero for lack of a better term. Setting all the way down. One's not higher or lower than the other one. What's nice about that is you kid prop these up to to install your elevator connect, but it's much easier if it's just sitting there, you don't have to worry about anything moving. Your elevator connect will come in your kit looking like this. It's a welded assembly. Uh, what you're gonna start with, or start doing is uh, get this in place, get it all lined up with each side. Uh, then you're gonna drill through and click all this in place on both sides. You want this flush with the top and then the forward side flush with the with the root of the elevator. So get it in position, get those riveted through. I'll show you one that we've got. This one we've already installed. It's all pretty painted and everything. I'll click all this in place real quick. check is with these is with this elevator connect installed and the elevator at zero the elevator at zero this hole should be directly above the hinge line okay so that tells you everything's at zero okay so We'll back up a minute. We got these. We got these clicked in here. This bolt and rivet obviously wouldn't be installed yet because now it's setting there at zero. What I like to do is take an eighth-inch drill bit and drill one eighth-inch hole 
through just one side of these two tubings. Uh, that, and you can go ahead and pull that in there with this cleat code in place. That'll set it really tight. Um, the reason we went to the rivet is if with just the bolt, that the, it's hollow tubing, so you can't tighten the bolt down to a torque spec because it just starts crushing the tubing. So the bolt over time will start to wear and, and these will start to get a little loose. You'll, you'll feel slop in them from one to the other. So we went to putting one stainless steel rivet in there and really that's what's driving the elevators basically is that one stainless steel rivet. It takes the load off the bolt. If this starts to get sloppy, you know, we can replace the rivet, we can add another rivet, whatever we need to do. But that bolt is there, obviously, uh, it's never going to fail, but we just take the pressure off of it to keep the slop out of the, out of the two halves. Uh, so we get this in place, we'll go ahead and pull rivets in it, and uh, that'll complete the elevator installation.